Hi everybody, I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is a distinguished fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations and former U.S. Ambassador to Israel, Martin Indyk. Protesters have continued to take to the streets over Israel's parliament passing controversial limits on the Supreme Court. Ambassador, can you explain to us just how big of a deal this is? So, Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, went on American TV networks and radio networks to explain that this was just a minor correction. Um, that produced uh, a sense of a Pinocchio moment amongst uh, his opponents in Israel. Um, because from their point of view, it's, it's a very big deal. Uh, the actual legislation that was passed this last week uh, removes what's called the reasonableness doctrine uh, from the ability of the Supreme Court of Israel to intervene in uh, government appointments in particular. Uh, so that will enable the government to basically appoint anybody that they want without the Supreme Court having any oversight of that. And the, I think the, the feeling is that this government in particular will use it as a kind of jobs for boys, cronyism that that is uh, of real concern. But it's also seen as the thin end of the wedge because there's a lot more legislation uh, that's already in various stages of passage in the Knesset um, and others in, in turn that they have in mind, which um, if this continues using the fact that government has a majority in the Knesset, um, that it will uh, sooner rather than later uh, curb the independence of Israel's judiciary. And that's why you still have hundreds of thousands of Israelis out in the street uh, protesting for the 30th week in a row uh, out of concern that this is really going to undermine the checks and balances between the judiciary and the executive and the, and the parliament, the Knesset. I do want to talk about Prime Minister Netanyahu's response because you said he said it was minor. He argued in favor of these reforms because he believes that the Supreme Court is too powerful. Is this a purposeful downplaying or is there some truth to what he's saying? What's your reaction to his response? Well, there is uh, nobody, I think, in leadership positions in Israel on the protest side that would say that the uh, the balance between the judiciary and, and the executive branch and the Knesset is is ideal, uh, and there's a willing, certainly a willingness to entertain uh, compromises that would uh, produce uh, a new balance, but a more reasonable balance, not one in which it tips entirely in the direction. Of, of the executive branch, which is what this legislation has in mind. So there's been an effort to try to reach the consensus uh, under the guidance of the president of Israel, Bushi Herzog, um, but that's, that didn't go anywhere. And instead of pausing the legislation and continuing with that, Netanyahu decided to force it through. And that's what's got everybody upset. So reasonable people could disagree about what the particular balance should be between the courts and, and, and the government. Um, but this is not a reasonable approach that, that Netanyahu's government is, is pursuing. It wants to basically strip the Supreme Court of its independence, be able to stack the court with its own people, uh, and be able to prevent the court from oversight, oversight of government legislation. It's important, I think, that, that your viewers understand that the Israeli system is not the same as the American system by a long shot. They have no constitution. So the Supreme Court doesn't have a formal constitutional role in reviewing legislation and making sure it's consistent with the Constitution. It's a much looser arrangement. And so 
as a result, I think there's a lot more contention about what is the proper role of the, of the Supreme Court. What are the implications here if the um, Supreme Court's powers are stripped? Is Israel still going to be a democracy? Well, it will become what's referred to in the literature as an illiberal democracy. No longer a liberal democracy, it will be more like Poland, Hungary, Turkey, where authoritarian leaders, when they sought to uh, bolster their control uh, and, and ensure uh, greater freedom to do what they wanted without the normal checks and balances of democracies, the first thing they did was to go after the courts and to strip the courts of their independence. And so that's, that's the sense of what, what will happen here. Yes, Israel will still have elections. Indeed, one possibility is, if you look at the polls today, if there were to an election to be held today, the government would be thrown out. The opposition would come in because there's no constitution. They could change the laws again. But the fear is, uh, on the opposition side, the government will push through this legislation, gut the courts, and then start to change the electoral laws uh, so as to essentially ensure that um, the government will always have a majority. And that's what's happened, for instance, in Hungary, uh, where there's still trappings of democracy, but the authoritarianism of, of uh, Orban's leadership is, is very clear. And of course, he just recently won another election.